Welcome to the Fort Johnson podcast. This week, we'll be discussing summer safety here at Fort Johnson. We know that spending time outdoors during the summer can bring plenty of joy, but there are some important considerations for keeping everyone safe and healthy. We're excited to talk about how you can make sure your experiences in nature this season are as positive as possible. So stay tuned to learn about how you can protect yourself and your loved ones from the summer's heat, sun, and other risks. Let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you are listening to this podcast, I am Jeff England from the Fort Johnson po- uh, Public Podcast Studios. <laughs> it's the Fort Johnson Podcast Studios uh, Public Affairs Office right here on Fort Johnson. And uh, today with me, I have from the Garrison Safety Office, Clifford Person. He is the Garrison Safety Officer. Good morning, good afternoon, good, good evening. Good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You had me scared. I didn't know if I was at PAO or the uh, podcast office. This is the, this is the podcast studio. Yeah, studio yeah, okay. it's, it's all, all all kinds of stuff like that. And we've got Brian Elliott, the safety and occupational health specialist. How's it going, Brian? Hey, how's it going? Oh, it sound good. And we got another safety and occupational health specialist, Chris Boyd. How are you doing? Great, sir. How about yourself? Oh, doing peach keen. Just loving it. It's a it's a it's a nice day out. It's nice and sunny and hot. Uh, so uh, you know, it around here. I've been here long enough to know that uh, after a certain time of year, we stop measuring the temperature in uh, degrees and just start saying how far from the sun we are. Yes, because apparently. <laughs> It, sometimes it feels like we're like, yeah, we're 16 feet from the sun. <laughs> it gets hot out there, and the humidity is not helping any. That's true. Yes, that's true. It's, yeah. it's like they say, it's not the heat, it's the humidity. It's the humidity, it, for sure. And I wish we had a dry heat around here yeah. every so long. Now, that's fall and spring. It's, well, we don't have uh, four seasons here. We only have hot and hotter. So. Yeah, hot and hotter. Yes. Oh, and then hot and wet. Yeah. Yeah, that's... that's that was from uh, that was in uh, Good Morning Vietnam. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> it's like weather forecast for today is going to be hot, hot and, and wet. Hot. Yeah, and wet. Yes, sir. <laughs> and tonight it's going to be hot and wet. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. I just saw it the other day too. So we got uh, we got summer is in full bloom around here, and it should last until next year. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. It just see, it's so funny. It's every crazy. year, every year, you know, during the winter, people said there, I can't wait for it to warm up around here. It's right. like, oh, you will not be waiting. Won't appreciate it. It's yeah. like we wait till it warms up, and then we wait till it cools down. It's <laughs> two. We got no. Actually, you know, I think we have three, uh, four seasons around here. Okay. We have cold. Mm-hmm. We have hot, mm. and then we have pollen, and we have oh, yeah. love bug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, those, love bug and pollen the, yeah those pollen. are the four the four big seasons around here so we've got our some of your um to make sure uh that we hit everything around here i'll i'm gonna hit all the things that i know uh, especially for me hot and sweaty is is my biggest problem i cannot go outside without it looking like i just jumped out of a pool that's right and um the only thing I can think of is if I'm sweating this much, I need to replace that liquid That's as true. much as possible. And uh, so I remember hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Yes, that's, sir. that's the biggest thing that we got to remember. Yeah, many years ago when I was still on active duty, we used to put the little blue dots on our watch or white dot or red dot to remind you to drink frequently. Uh, so because it's easy to forget, especially if, you, if you're sweating because you feel like everything is okay. You're kind of cool. But actually, the more you sweat, the more you should be drinking. Absolutely. They say they say if your pee's not clear enough, right. you ain't drinking enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brian knows this one, huh? Oh yeah, got in trouble for that. <laughs> Using the word urine. Yeah. <laughs> At the we. But yeah. uh <laughs> pee, yeah. urine, we. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all the same. <laughs> so the lighter it is, is the the better for you. And if you're not hydrating the uh, night before, is you're probably too late if you're going to hydrate that morning that day of it. yeah they say they say that if if you're out working in the, or out in the heat and you're getting thirsty it's already too late, too late. yeah you gotta you gotta make sure that you're not thirsty and you can't overdo it so uh you know those 16.9 ounces of uh water is uh if you drink more than three of those an hour mm. you can, uh, probably succumb to uh water intoxic uh intoxication uh-oh wow. so, no more than three. Well, I drink like forty ounces at a time. <laughs> I've got a I've got a cup that's, that's like that's 40. About forty. That's, it's yeah. about forty ounces. Yeah, I think that's good. That's three. Oh, holes, yeah. oh, three an hour. Yeah. Oh no, I don't drink three an hour. Yeah. No. <laughs> Some people do. I drink maybe one, yeah. two. It matters if it matters if there's ice in it or not. So, yeah. 
the ice water makes it feel real good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I go out there, uh, and, you know, when you have a lot of land that you have to mow, uh, you have to remember to take breaks in between. Um, that's where I get, uh, I keep getting these emails all day long. It's like every 15 minutes around here, heat category five. Right, right. Heat category five. Uh, At eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. It's like, wait a minute, the sun's supposed to come up, right? <laughs> <laughs> I got one the other day. It was like two o'clock in the morning. It's yeah. like, wait a minute, I'm not even here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, luckily, I get luckily I have air conditioning in my office, so I think that's the best invention ever. Yeah, we do too. We live in a freezer in our office, so it's pretty cold. Yeah, that's nice, huh? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, For some people anyway. <laughs> we got the uh, the. Uh, I've seen your your pamphlets and your flyers and mm-hmm. all of your safety. You know, I got I follow you guys all the time, and um, there's one. It's got three R's. Three yes. R's and it's like a red, yellow, and green, yes. like like your dots. Yeah, that's yeah, it. like your dots. So you got the red, yellow, and green for like the traffic signal. Traf- yeah, yep. traffic signal. Yep. And that's uh, it, if I remember, it's like re- recognize, retreat, and um, report. So what that is? That's our UXO program. So uh, UXOs. Yeah, unexploded what ordnance. Yeah. What so, the heck? Uh, the I thought this was. I'm all mixed up. I thought this was for heat safety. No, no <laughs> for UXO. Yeah, UXO. Well, ordinance. if you're around a UXO and it explodes, it it's going to get be hot. hot. Yeah, you make it hot very, very quick. <laughs> so the three R's program is was instituted in 2000 by the Department of the Army. What had happened was some kids around Camp Shelby had walked onto one of the impact areas, and That's it right. took a. Uh, a cannon round home and it happened to, it happened to explode and, and kill them. Um, oh, that's not good. But we've had incidents uh, all across the country with that. So they, they instituted this program within 25 installations, uh, I think six active duty locations, and then the rest are uh, National Guard and Reserve training areas. Oh, wow. So, you know, since Louisiana, we've done extensive amount of training and maneuvers, you know, Louisiana maneuvers back in 1941, as well as troop movements from Alexandria to Fort Johnson, uh, Peace on Ridge back to Fort Johnson and the surrounding communities, surrounding areas with all our training areas. Plus, our training areas are not blocked off to the general public anyway. That's, right. That's crazy. So we instituted this program to inform the public, the installation, the youth, what to do if they come across something that they don't recognize. You know, recognize that it is a hazard. If it doesn't look like something that you put there, more than likely it is a hazard to back away from it and call the proper authorities. Yeah, I saw a video on YouTube that it was uh, this guy was magnet fishing and he pulled up uh, he did. A, yeah. Yeah, so, a bomb yeah. or yeah. something like that. It's crazy. And um, I actually have personal knowledge of this because uh, before we moved into our building that we're in now, before that, we were over on Radio Road, mm-hmm. which no longer is. It, no, it, it does exist it, on the not, other side, just it, not all the way. Mm-hmm. Yes, but sir. our area is, it was. Um, it, our building was like an old World War II barracks building, building. and um, it just happened. It's just it's so funny because public affairs on Radio Road and the building was 411. Yeah, it's like 411 information. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, uh, I was out in the the field right next to the parking lot and found all these old bullets. And I'm talking not just one or two. It was like a whole bunch of them, and it looked like it was from like an M1 grand or something it was it did not look like uh 223s did you take any pictures uh no no but i did call the authorities and i marked it off and you know got my military training into involved and marked it off and called uh called the cops and they had sent out uxo people and eod and cleaned it all up it was so i actually do have some uh experience with that and that's was right here on like the main the main uh installation not out in some remote area so (laughs) It's crazy where you might find these things. Yeah, because people try to discard things after they come back from the range. Even where our office is now, many, many years ago, that was a range. Uh, oh, wow. S- small caliber, but it was a range nevertheless. So there's lead and everything all over the place out there. I think the best place to uh, to do all of this stuff is uh, at the recreational shooting range. Yeah. Right <laughs> here on post. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, but, you know, we also bring, uh, inf- you know, uh, a highlight to it as well because you know soldiers do take souvenirs they they That's do right. they do end up with stuff you know either their their parents grandparents in this area they might have something they picked up off a range found in a home or something like that they can always call the proper authorities to turn that stuff in and the other thing that i i do remember from a long time ago was a demonstration um for especially for the air force when they draw when they're doing target practice and target bombing and all that stuff they use inert uh, equipment or inert um, weapons mm-hmm. or ammo, I mean, and uh, it's colored blue. Right. And just because it's colored blue does not mean it's not dangerous. It That's just right. means it's for training. And um, they showed off a, a 
a blue uh, gravity bomb. And they said, no, this can hurt. And they put like a, a two by four over the end of it mm-hmm. and set it off. And that thing blew that two by four apart. And this was a training bomb. Right. <laughs> it's like, well, wow. It still has a minor bit of explosives. In oh, it. yeah. For spotting charges, stuff like that. Just like the the weapons with uh, blanks mm-hmm. or movies and stuff like that. Right. It's like, nope, those yeah. are still, still dangerous. Yeah. Still a propellant. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, Mr. Boyd, can you tell them about the UXO training you do with the uh, local schools as well? Oh, you train the schools? Yeah. Well, coordinate, we, we, coordinate. we would coordinate with the with the liaison, Miss uh, Cock, uh, to go out and and teach the school kids of how to recognize retreat and report. So we did a a school day with Parkway Elementary last year, uh, this past school year, with uh, I think it was eight hundred and something kids that we that mm-hmm. we trained. You bring out uh, the demonstrations the and, mascot, and what they look and, like, and so we'll go to Tassie and we'll get the um, the uh, the training rounds. They're not. No, they're not explosive at all. They're basically plastic. They're just our metal, what looks like it. So, you know, for training aids for soldiers. As long as it looks like it. It looks yeah, like yeah, it. So yeah. we, we've also done that. Ooh, uh, ah. Salute to the troops, Freedom <laughs> Fest. We try to have three R's in just about everything for MWR related just to get out to that population and say, hey, here's here's my hazards you may come across, whether you're out in Kasachi National Forest or whether you're just hiking through Kasachi or whether you're riding ATVs. Or even if you're doing construction on one of your home sites around the area, you know, with erosion and stuff like that, you start digging stuff up, you might come across something. Yeah, yeah it's it's uh, weird to see the um, the demonstration uh, weapons and stuff. It's like right. you bring, and you have a mascot. There's a mascot. Yes. Is it is it mi- Sergeant mis- Wolf? Sergeant Wolf. Okay. So I there was one on TV. It was uh, it was Mr. Pistoli. And if you if you hug him, he'll, he'll it's like no, uh, dog, that's a horrible nah, mess. Bad, bad, bad. Well, Wolf is spelled W O O F too. So Wolf, yeah, yeah, Sergeant Wolf, yeah, Wolf, yeah, Wolf. Sergeant, Sergeant Wolf. Well, make sure Mr. Boyd brings that in. He's the shortest in statue, a stature of us all. It's a pretty tall suit, so it has to require somebody pretty big. Just uh, football pads. Uh, yeah, you'll fit in them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sure. So uh, we're we're also so we've got all of that, but and you know the uh, the UXO stuff doesn't really have a season. I mean, no, no that's, all, so, that's all year round. But, no, but, but it does have a season in some sorts because normally children are not playing outside when it's cold. But now that it's summertime, we got fishing, hunting. Mr. Boyd already mentioned ATV drive, rolling, driving. Uh, the boats and everything else that we do on Fort, you know, Fort Johnson's. Yeah, you don't want to find a UXO floating around in the uh, in the lake. Well, though, not with a magnet. <laughs> yeah, even for those fishing around the, the lakes and ponds around the installation, the training area, stuff like that. Yeah, hunters that come out and start start, start tracking for hunting season. Hunting season's right around the corner, so I'm sure, sure right. there's hunters out there right now tracking. Yeah, I just saw a deer on my uh, property. It was a yeah. big one. And it's like that kind of looks pregnant. Yeah, I couldn't tell. Is, yeah, yep, it's like, do they? Ha- is that when? Had it early this? spring, but. Yeah, it was uh, it was it was really big. I think it might have been a buck. I think it was a buck. Just put your and salt lick out there. They'll come back. Yeah, I know. I want. I had this one field that I want to dig up and, and plant clover in it. Yeah, and just you know make it a whole yeah. pl- a feed plot right there. Right. Yeah, your and neighbors, I, you're not trying to. <laughs> yeah, I just I just sit right outside my back door. It's like, okay, what are you doing, hunting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in the meantime, it's too hot to do Wait sit out <laughs> sit outside in that sun. Uh, so um, heat. I'm outside. Uh, working on my yard and all and you know doing whatever it is while I'm outside and um, there are times that you know I'll start getting dizzy or uh, you know that tunnel vision thing it's where you can see uh, 180 degrees from side to side but all of a sudden it just zooms down oh. into <laughs> into one little area and it's like okay I think I'm gonna sit down for a second <laughs> that's a sign isn't it that's a different that's a sign right <laughs> it's a sign to sit down <laughs> Oh, it is. It's, uh, you're probably uh, starting uh, the symptoms for uh, heat, heat exhaustion, exhaustion yeah. which if you keep going or you don't get out of the uh, heat, it could lead to uh, heat stroke. You don't want that. No, yeah. no. And uh, the only thing I know about heat stroke is if uh, if you stop sweating, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. Sign. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I keep. That's that's one of my biggest takeaways right there. Yeah, so the military's got some pretty good stuff. Is their uh, ice sheets? That's right. So yeah. they uh, in their coolers uh, and ice sheets. It sounds like it's some kind of big thing that uh, includes you know a suit or something. But all it is is what it sounds like is a bunch of sheets that uh, you no longer use in your house that you got in your closet for guests. Is you put them in a uh, a cooler 
fill it up with ice water, and mm-hmm. then uh, they last probably about 15 minutes. If someone's, uh, like you said, is getting dizzy and has to sit down, is you can apply uh, ice sheets and cool them off pretty quick. Now, uh, an ice sheet is not to be confused with an ice shelf. Because those are found usually in Antarctica. Uh, that's right. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, totally, totally, <laughs> totally, totally different. different. Yeah. yeah. No <laughs> if, there's, if there's penguins <laughs> on your ice sheet, <laughs> yeah, it's a little too big. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, now, there's other things that, you know, I, I, hate, I hate saying all this or admitting to it all because it's like, I know better than this. But, you know, I've been outside um, doing whatever, and all of a sudden I get like a, um, these little bumps. It's like my my skin turns red. It looks like hives yeah. and uh, it's like some kind of uh, rash it is that rash. I'm getting. Uh, yes. So we've got, uh, and that's part of the heat too. So kind of, you can put sometimes it in, I in think it's like grass. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you can put it in a chronological order. Those heat uh, rashes may come up first and then succinctly you may after that go into having heat cramps. But yeah, Mr. Ellie, you want to divulge a little more about the heat rash? Yeah, so that that's what it is, is uh, almost like uh, razor bumps or uh, mosquito bites uh, or, uh, in some cases, uh, prickly heat. So what it is is uh, you'll start sweating and you'll get little blisters. Are you sure it's not malaria? <laughs> it could be. I'm just... Uh, <laughs> If it's uh, usually heat and it just popped up right there, is usually you get them uh, behind your knees, right. on your arms, yeah. uh, on your neck, uh, that kind of places. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. You just uh, and it's not a bad thing. It'll probably go away in a day or two. Uh, you only have to be uh, concerned with it if they uh, they last more than three days and uh, or uh, it, it starts filling up with pus. Then, then you might want to go see a doctor. Yeah, yeah. that might be. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> it's like, I don't know if it's a heat rash or smallpox. <laughs> it's also trying to acclimate, too, over a period of time. Instead of going, starting your first day out, work eight hours in the sun, you may want to work two. Is that where I went wrong? I think so. Yes. <laughs> I don't like working eight hours at all, ever. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get it all done at once. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's like yeah. once you get working on the yard, it's yeah. like you don't want to quit until it's all done. Yes, sir. The last thing you want to do is start all over the next day i think that's what mr ellie has been doing the last couple of weeks bush hogging the field and, bush hogging and mr boy too same thing yeah. but the best thing is do work the rest cycles i like need to now. do i need to go bush hog one of my fields and um and <laughs> what i'm really hoping is that someday i'll be able to afford one of those tractors that have the cab and the air conditioning in it <laughs> so i was going to get that but oh. I, I was afraid and uh, my wife talked me out of it is i was afraid is because you know Every time you go through a field or something, especially with vines and branches, is it'll slap that windshield and pretty soon is you can't even see out of it. It's not like it's fogged and <laughs> mm-hmm. it's scratched and you're like, what, what was the other reason? She said the air conditioner may break. The, it, now you're right. stuck inside of a you know non air conditioner. Oh come on, we yeah. know how to open the door. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's still hot. I think the only good thing for that would be is if you were like I'm I'm getting ready to sp- uh, spray because I got a bunch of uh, goat weed is. Uh, is to maybe enclose that so I don't have to wear PPE like you know a respirator, uh-huh. uh, long sleeves. If I'm in the cab, it'd be like inside your car and yeah. you spray it. And I could sit there in shorts. So is goat weed bad? It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. I I just planted uh, 16 acres of uh, bahia and uh, I was hoping it'd grow. And the next thing I know is I it's. It's goat weed. Yeah, full of goat weed. Yeah. It, we planted um, mint one year in our garden. Little did we know how much that spreads. <laughs> it's like yeah. I spent the next yeah. years trying to dig all the roots out and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's Sometimes crazy. it's bad. Yes, yeah, it's, it's weird how you plant some some things and then companion plants show up with them. Mm-hmm. 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 It's like I'd like to get the, uh, like the clover. I'd like to get that especially because... Um, you don't have to mow it as much. Yeah. You know, if it just gets a little too tall, you just set your lawnmower a little higher and cut off the, the flowers and stuff. But it's really that's good right. for bees, too. Yep, that's and right. that's another safety thing. Yeah. Yeah. If you're if you're allergic to insects, or especially bees or something, have an EpiPen. Well, I would say just move away from Louisiana. That's it. There's no place. <laughs> well, you can move to the North Pole. I don't think they have any uh, insects up there yet. <laughs> <laughs> They're working on it. Everything Louisiana is designed to eat your stingy. Yeah. Okay. So so <laughs> so so we've got that uh, we've got that heat rash and we haven't paid attention to it and we keep working and then all of a sudden uh, I get a side ache 
or a yeah. stomach ache, um, my legs start cramping up, and that's that's like sign number two, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you used the word already, cramp. So oh. deep, you fail here, sir. Yes, <laughs> he cramps. So, and uh, Mr. L, you want to divulge on that? Just Wait a minute, how do I fail if yeah, I knew so the, not, if I knew so the this word? Is, this that is was like the Jeopardy. right answer. This is like Jeopardy. You don't use the word in the answer, right? Oh, okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, so you uh, just like the uh, the heat rashes, uh, you get cramps in your abdomen, arms, feet, legs, just about everywhere you can get them. And uh, it's, you know, if you don't drink enough water, I usually get them at night after working oh, all the, day. Like muscle spasms and, and Charlie horses and stuff. So I usually got to take potassium or uh, zinc, uh, zinc is otherwise in the middle of the night, I'll just oh, wake yeah. up and my leg will cramp Both up. Both of my feet will curl like, back to my ankles. Ah. Yeah. Hell yeah. So that's it. You just got to massage it out. Uh, I, I look for salt if I can't get enough uh, zinc or potassium. I look for bananas. bananas. I, lo- I love bananas. That's the word. I just, yeah, I, I think that works, but I, I think that's probably uh, not. It, it, if you're going to cramp up and you're going to eat a banana, you might be there for an hour waiting for it to, to, to kick <laughs> All in. All right, so I'll add some ice cream, yeah, <laughs> make a banana go. split. That's it. My but there are some, right. <laughs> yeah, there's some other issues, too, though. You maybe be dizzy, sweating really bad, and uh, nauseating, those kind of things. Oh, too. yeah. And vomiting as well. So. Oh, yeah, vomiting's not a good sign. Yeah, that's especially probably, not when you're already dehydrated. So Yeah. yeah. That's probably worst-case scenario because now you are moving into heat exhaustion. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not, that's not good. Up. Yes, sir. Heat exhaustion. Is that the, oh? That's the next step, ain't it? Yes, you sir. said you're moving into it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, great. I, I, I th- you touched on it before. Is you know when you're starting to get dizzy and your face is sweating and, and you, your you pupils dial, uh, squeeze in, your vision goes down to nothing. Yeah, it's like you can't see what's on the side yeah. anymore. It's right. just uh, straight ahead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's where you say I'm, I'm going to the house. Yeah. Start that's, I tried doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I have. It's like the my garage is not insulated. So it's usually hotter in the garage mm-hmm. than it is outside, and it's already hot outside. So you go in there, and you, you know you've got a turkey over here baking and mm-hmm. cake over then in the other corner. But um, I go in there, I, I'll sit down, and I have uh, as many fans as possible blowing on me, and I'll drink my water and, and stay out of the sun. And it's nice when it, there's a breeze outside; right. that helps out a lot. But dang, it's like I get so tired. So quick that the heat just draws draw, it out of me, yeah, it just draws it out of me. And I can't I can't really work for a long period of time. And that's the one thing that uh, that is one of the best things that the military is a stickler on is the work rest cycle. Yes. Uh, when you get up to what cat five, it's what work 15 minutes, yeah. rest now 45. It, it, it's close. It's so they want you to work uh, 10 minutes and rest 50 when it when it's a he cat, cat five. five. Yeah. If you can see, I usually do that when it's a he cat one. Oh. And then I work up from there. <laughs> he cat five don't work. Yeah, is, yeah. <laughs> well, you have to remember too about your consumption of uh, liquids. So it should be water and maybe a little Gatorade, but mainly water. But definitely not caffeine or alcohol because those also help exacerbate. So much for the the summer ales. Because I heard you mention about the cookie, the turkey cooking and the cake cooking. There's probably <laughs> some cool beverages somewhere in there. Absolutely. Right, right. So you don't want to drink you know, those. And as much as I love beer, I cannot drink beer when i'm thirsty it's just it's just the only thing that'll satisfy quench is water or maybe some gatorade powerade you know something something like that okay but yeah i i'm always about the water and it's like i always would love to go out there and and mow and have a beer while i'm mowing and then i realize that i can't take my hands off the the sticks because right. it's a zero turn. Yeah. You take one off to drink a take a drink of your yeah. beer. You're all like off to the side someplace. <laughs> or it's been sitting in your cup holder for a half an hour. Yeah. And, and now half of it's it. gone yeah. because it's, it's shaking yeah. out. That's such a disappointment, though, because when I was at the dealership before getting my zero turn, make sure it had a beer holder, you know, right. you know a drink holder. <laughs> Could I actually do it? You know? Yeah. You have to, you have well, to learn you can how to hold If you can do it in the middle. You yeah. Can. I was thinking, it's like, you know, if I could just get like a steering wheel to hold the two sticks together, I could just do it one hand. That's good. Yeah. It, might, it might be something neat. No, that's pretty cool. Uh, so The only problem is, I don't know if we mentioned it, but this is accumulative. So you have uh, a couple of days where you feel like you're exhausted. You have a couple of days where you get rash. And, and then you're exhausted. Oh, and it builds up from there. Yes, so. Sir. so every time you're injured in a heat injury, it gets worse. It gets worse. It just, and you're oh, so you're stressful. not even starting from zero anymore. No. So you get you get exhausted one day, you come back out, you're starting off at exhausted and work your way. Oh, man. Already, yes, sir. Wish I could do that with, a, like, running a marathon. 
run two miles today. <laughs> yeah, it'll run a mile, man. <laughs> and if you if you suffered a heat injury, you're more susceptible to a heat to, injury to later heat. on in life as well. Oh, yes, wonderful. So I, if I go out in the sun for longer than three hours, <laughs> I got, when I go out in the sun for longer than three hours, I get heat sick. Yeah. You know, if I, I get nauseous. I could... I can totally feel that. I can, it start, it makes more sense now. It makes more sense. It's like, because when I, you know, when I first moved in or, you know, when I first got here, it's like, I was able to do a lot of stuff. Now yeah. it's like, I get out yeah. there and it's nowhere near as long. I get outside and it's like, okay, I'm going back inside. Yeah. It's dangerous too. Yes, sir. It's like, uh, uh, uh I don't even know what it's like anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're, if, if you're, heat exhausted you've already had the rash you've already and you're not paying attention you're not doing oh and the other thing um uh, the liquids because my podiatrist mm. tells me this all the time um well first you know drinking beer while you're you're out in the sun working and stuff that's going to dehydrate you and stuff like that mm -hmm. but if you get dehydrated if you have uh, too much uric acid in your in your system like mm -hmm. like i do um, you can get gout yes. and uh, a gout flare up is I'm thinking heat stroke might be better. <laughs> I do <laughs> so, not. So gout included with heat stroke and uh, I mean, heat exhaustion along with being intoxicated. Oh yeah. Real bad, yeah. Yeah. That's, you're not, you're not looking at a good weekend there. No, definitely won't be able to walk. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. No riding the lawnmower either. So. so if we get, if we get exhausted and we still continue to push and we push and push and push, you're looking at a stroke. And you probably won't know you had it. A heat stroke, right? The so, only way, the only thing, the only thing that I know about a heat stroke is you stop sweating, right? And that's that's pretty much it. But I'm sure there's more that there's more to it than that. So the the body temperature rises over 104 degrees, Michelle. You could dig on that a little more. But the main thing about heat uh, stroke is that you probably won't know somebody else would be calling 911 for you. So like most of the <laughs> a lot of the the people that get medevaced out of the field is their uh, liver or kidney start uh, stop down stop uh, functioning mm -hmm. so which is not good if you're drinking beer right <laughs> yeah or caffeine for or them. caffeine yeah, yeah. yeah but uh oh, man so everything just shuts down and well i know that a high fever or a high temper body temperature can cause brain damage mm -hmm. uh, we're not we're not looking good here no because you're delivering your your uh balance is off you're dizzy um, like Mr. Elliott said, your your internal organs are shutting down. Your temperature is over 104 and sustain that, so you have brain damage. Um, a heat stroke is uh, is deadly, and you need medical attention immediately. So you have to get them to somebody, cool them down as fast as you can into a medical facility. Now, now this is uh, hyperthermia, which is above above the temperature, mm -hmm. and hypothermia is below the temperature. Mm -hmm. So you. It, when you have a hypothermia and you're getting frostbite and all this stuff, the last thing you want to do is put your whatever body parts are it's cold warm. into like the last thing you want to do is put it into like warm water or hot water or, or heat you up. Is that the same uh, is the opposite with um, it's, it, it's the opposite. You want to try to cool the body down as fast as possible. Yes, so uh, ice water and Mission. what's colder and what's colder than ice water, <laughs> cold ice beer. Oh, that, that's true. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever heard of Florida water? Florida water? Florida water. I, is that like swamp water? Uh, no, it's colder. It's a, it's a mixture. I, I learned this um, many summers ago. Uh, it's like an isopropyl alcohol in, in ice water. So it keeps, wow. it keeps the water colder than 32 degrees, but liquid. Oh, I... I I think I heard that with like when you're doing ice cream, as you put it, uh, salt water. Yeah, it, it doesn't freeze as fast as uh, fresh water. So it can get colder and colder. And yeah, oh yeah, it's yeah. real. It's a really good. I think we should. I think we should. Uh, you know, find the recipe for that. Oh yeah. And uh, offer that to the units that are out working. And then what you do is you just keep a, a rag. You keep your your towels in that water, and it keeps it uh, ultra cold. Right. So it's it's even better than ice water. It's it's kind of like an ice sheet, but it's um, what it bendable and, and pliable, pliable. Hey, yeah, there you go. It's look at me. I'm a thesaurus over here. You are. You're all over it. So about, some of those symptoms too. Go ahead, Mr. Elliott. I'm how about sorry. some canned air? You just spray them with that. Yeah, that'd be. <laughs> here some, we go. You can get a can of dehydrated water. You just get just add water. 
There you go. <laughs> so, so some of those symptoms you may see is rapid breathing and tachycardia, of course, seizures. What's tachycardia? <clears throat> oh, the heart's racing. I'm sorry. Oh, racing heart? Yes, sir. Yeah, we're not all doctors over here, yeah, Dr. Well, you, Clifford. Yeah, well, you're the, 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 the source, as you said, over here. So <laughs> uh, weakness in the body. And then, like I said before, when you take them to the medical facility, they're going to try to make sure they cool the body. Uh, both intravenously as well as with a cooling blanket, ice bath, and then medication to present, uh, prevent uh, f- future seizures. So there's a lot going on. And An- uh, hydrosis. Yes. And an hydrosis. Yes. And hydrosis. That's, yes. the, that's the you stop sweating thing. Yes. That's yes. the one I know. Yep, yep. <laughs> You're on top of it. I'm on top of it. Why are you working here? You need to come to the safety <laughs> office. <laughs> oh, and, and don't forget the oliguria. Whoa. That's oh, another word of that. That's another word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all on the list. I don't know. No, let me look at that one. So it's low urine output, Mr. You know, Elliot. I, I'm really glad I'm really glad there's no cameras on us right now. People would see that. Oh, he's cheating. He's cheating. He's looking it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good stuff. So um you said the uh the treat to treat heat stroke, um as someone's calling nine one one, you are cooling them down as fast as possible as much as possible as obviously as possible. It, uh, yeah. you could be out in the field and not have anything and, and you don't want to delay the response to get them to the hospital trying to cool them down so whatever you have to do to get them to the to the hospital is most important. cantines of water right. anything that's as cool saturate his body yeah. yeah so but when should you like when should you contact your doctor immediately he, they should go to a medical treatment facility emergency room immediately yes sir and they're not going to say uh come on you're you're walk it off <laughs> they might. <laughs> it, won't be a, it won't be a good walk. Now that's basic training. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a Motrin. So, drink more water. Yeah, drink more water. Motrin. So, what kind of medication uh, is there? Medication to uh, prevent seizures and and well, I know you would go into seizures is is one of the one of the symptoms. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You can go into seizures and oh, that's you don't want that. Um, and you've got the uh, like. Oh my! If if we could have some supplemental oxygen, that would be nice. That'd be great. Yes, sir. That would be great. Yes, sir. So, um, so this heat illness, all of it. What can you do to prevent it or to help prevent it? You could uh, drink water, seek shade, adequate rest. sleep, hydration. Don't overdo it. Yeah, don't overdo it. Take Acclimate. A yeah. Take a knee. Take a knee. Drink That's water. Good. Seek shade. <laughs> right in the middle of the room. <laughs> right in the middle of the field. Your wife's looking out the window. What are you doing? I'm just taking a knee, babe. Yeah, hire me. hire someone else to do your job. <laughs> yeah, when you, I guess when you are with your uh, okay. So yeah, <laughs> let's say let's say uh, the leaders are out there, mm-hmm. the troop leaders, and all of you know we are in a military environment, so we've all got leaders. I guess the non-military people have leaders too, but um, what what can the leaders do to ensure um, to help prevent? What can they do? So there's a because I want I want commanders and I want right. uh, platoon lead uh, everything Largest, all the way down. Yes. I want yeah. everybody to listen to these uh, things. I want the uh, support from the command to say, "Hey, this is a good one. Listen yeah. to this and let's see, uh, let's see what we can teach the leaders out there. What what can the leaders do to? So you got to know your people and uh, you know you know the ones that are, like uh, Chris mentioned that are susceptible to uh, heat heat illnesses. But there's uh, there's several different. Uh, uh, and s- several different charts that you could use, you know, like uh, like we mentioned, is the the work rest, the color of your urine, uh, how long it takes to acclimate, which is two weeks. Uh, also, the heat index chart, uh, chart, which if it's you know 90, 90 degrees and it's uh, a certain humidity, is that it could it could feel like it's ten degrees uh, hotter. Mm. So as long as everybody's monitoring that, the other thing is uh, risk assessment prior to. Uh, Training, training yeah is that you know it's going to be heat uh, out there and uh, so what you would do is annotate that ahead of time and then uh, everybody would know the plan you brief it and you make sure you have like the ice sheets available everybody's drinking at least a canteen of water right. an hour uh, the work rest uh, cycle all that good stuff combined will probably keep uh, you and your troops safe yeah that, and knowing the signs helps too that's it Yep, ensuring your personnel are trained in, in, in the prevention and recognition. That's right. How to recognize those those hazards and how to treat those hazards. Now, do you all put out uh, charts and stuff to, to the units? We do. <clears throat> we do for the local hazards. So we have a local hazards brief that talks about the humidity, heat, uh, of course, the whole uh, year. But we don't put anything out specifically to the units, but we do put things into the eGuardian. 
Oh, the eGuardian's mm-hmm. a good place to yeah. get that. Yeah. That's right. So, yeah, uh, I know that you guys have, um, like, charts to help with the heat index in addition to the all users emails and stuff Mm -hmm. um you got the work rest cycle and water consumption table and and you really should be following those um that might be something to look at you know send out an email hey guys here just just to be sure because it's kind of been kind of hot lately normally the uh the walk the warrior uh operations center they send out a email which you get every morning or every night or early in the morning two o'clock to say that we already reached the uh heat index that puts us in category five and um but we yeah that's something we could probably work on to see if we can get some out you know i think uh i think we're gonna have to add another category or yeah. two it's <laughs> category seven <laughs> category seven yeah, yeah. it's like category 10 just don't <clears throat> just don't do it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So um, we've got the only I mean, I think we hit on everything. And um, I'd like to have you back in here for, um, you know, this fall, because I know that, you know, during the fall, the big thing about uh, us, especially around here, and I enjoy doing it is deep frying turkeys. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, I, I think I'll have to have you guys back in here um, around Thanksgiving or so. Yeah. Get in here and. Maybe we, oh, that'd be so cool. Work with the fire department and uh, get a demonstration of what happens when you um, deep fry a frozen turkey. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. That'd be cool. Yeah. You just do it out in the middle of nowhere. So. Yes, bunch, sir. Bunch of screaming going on. Yeah. yeah. So no, nobody would know because they can't see us, but they'll, they'll hear it, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Clifford. Chris, yes, sir. Chris and Brian. Thank you guys for coming in. I appreciate it. I really do. Well, and if they have more questions, they can always call us at 337-531 SAFE. I had to do that plug, right? 531 SAFE. SAFE. That's S-A- that's easy to remember. 7233. 7233. SAFE. Just yep. in case you can't spell it. Yep. And I'll get if, you that hooked on phonics. Though. There you go. And then if they want to uh, ride motorcycles, because we also have that, uh, they can always call 337-531-7433 or 531 ride ride and that's for motorcycle yeah it is ride, motorcycle ride, it is well ride, around ride. here motorcycle weather is all year round yes sir yeah, yeah. <laughs> i we appreciate, appreciate you guys coming in and uh talking about uh summer safety and uxos and uh we'll have you back in here i mean this is a good time i enjoy talking i enjoy talking to y'all appreciate thank you that's thank great you. i appreciate thank it i'm jeff england from the fort johnson public affairs office and you've been listening to the fort johnson podcast and we will be listening at you later Thank you.